my name is Mohan Chandran and uh, I'm the chairman of the Indian School. Uh, I've come from Kerala. I had all my education. I did uh, my schooling in local public school. I did my pre-university in Union Christian College in Alway. My engineering in uh, Trivandrum Engineering College. After that one, I went to XLRI and did my MBA. And uh, after that one, my first job was with uh, uh, Steel Authority of India Limited, their subsidiary HSCL on the construction division. Uh, six years I worked with them in different, different places. After that one, I came down to Dubai. I joined one of the largest construction companies in the Middle East, Saudi Bin Laden Group and uh, worked with them for about 22 years. While working, uh, I, have been post I, I was posted to Far East as their regional manager in Kuala Lumpur. And uh, later on, I became the general manager of one of their divisions. That is, uh, as far as the professional side is concerned. During that time, I was instrumental in uh, helping to set up the uh, uh, Sharjah Indian School as one of the people there. My wife was probably the first teacher in that school. And uh, later in 1988, I established this school, Indian School Ajman, because there was no a good school at that time in Ajman. So I said, okay, let me just try. And uh, from that time, we have tried very hard to make a good quality school. And uh, today I can say that okay, we are one of the topmost schools academically in the Gulf, not only UAE, in the Gulf. We have about 1,800 students and uh, nearly 100 uh, teachers and more than 150 staff. So uh, that's basically about me and what I've done in very short. Uh, if I go back, my mother, parents were not educated. So, but uh, what they, they have, they had five children and uh, they wanted that all of five of us uh, really uh, get educated well. And uh, all five of us are postgraduates. And uh, so somehow or the other that education, that passion came into me. And uh, when I came to this country and when uh, my wife is a teacher basically, so again another motivation for me to uh, get into education. And looking at that one, I said that okay, engineering is one side, I can make money or I can uh, earn my money. But I wanted to give something back to the society. So the best way to do was that, what, because being my wife being a teacher, it was easy to get into, look into education. And I really had a passion for education. So I started the school and uh, that's a story. Uh, number one was that when I ca uh, start, uh, came in to start the school in Ajman, Ajman was a very, uh, I mean, didn't have much of the facilities at all. And the, uh, the expats, Indian expats were of low income uh, group actually. So they couldn't send their children to schools in Dubai or then where the fee structure was very high. So I thought of that, okay, if I get into this education, I should make it affordable quality education for the people who can, uh, who can, who want to send their children actually. So I set up a school where with a very low fee structure. And uh, that was one of the challenges to how to make the ends meet actually, because with a low fee structure, uh, it's very difficult to send it. it. Took about 10 years to even to break even actually. So that was the first challenge. Second challenge was that given uh, the ruler, I went to the ruler for a piece of land in, uh, to get this school actually. So this where today you are seeing this school. When I came into this place in 1990, it was water. It was completely marshy land. There was nothing here, absolutely nothing. It was only water. So we had to backfill this whole area to build a school actually. So you can say that was a second challenge actually because it was to do some infrastructure from nothing actually. So, and uh, one of the years actually, we had to carry children because it was all so much water because of the rain. We had to carry children for a board examination. So that was kind of challenge which you can say 
the infrastructure challenge. Second thing is that with the low income group, we could not afford to charge high fees. So, uh, within the limited resources, to make a quality uh, school is tough. So, you can say that this is a third challenge to keep teachers uh, with a low salary scale to keep the teachers. But we are very fortunate that okay, uh, we have teachers who are today working with me for the last 23, 24 years. So, uh, what we have done is that give them a proper family background and uh, it's a family here. I am not boss or anything like that. We are all uh, working together. And uh, fortunately, the teachers have uh, stayed with us and uh, I've got some excellent teachers, probably one of the best in the UAE teachers we have and our results speak for that one because we have been, I think, one of the top five schools in academically for the board results for quite a number of years actually. So that's all because of the teachers actually. So that's the challenge. Number one is that sincerity and integrity. Okay. The, uh, if you're a good teacher, it, it should come from within you. Okay. You, you, you have to be a good teacher, you have to look at the students, what do they want actually. So, if you cannot empathize with your student, you will not be a good teacher. The second thing is that you should be very, very good in your subject. If you are not good in the subject, you will not be able to impart education to the students. Third thing I would say that okay, uh, they should have a positive attitude actually. So, these are things which I look for a teacher actually. We are trying our best to make sure that okay, they have and uh, I can say that okay, we have more or less succeeded because uh, the teachers are really putting their heart and soul into it actually. No, I don't think that any school is there where teachers will call their children at home uh, and training the t students uh, at no cost. Uh, there they will be charging tuition by everything but here our teachers will call their students at home and uh, they work their hearts out to bring up the children. So, that's positive attitude. The uh, in, in India, when you go to India, the students are uh, more hard working because uh, there the competition is extremely tough. So, if you want to really uh, get onto the top of it, you have to really slog it out. Here, comparatively, the parents give them a lot of uh, comfort actually. So, the children do not know the value of uh, the hard work which they had to put in actually. So, that's the kind of difference which actually you see here. But that apart from that one, uh, here the children are not so much of a, they don't have that competition. So, if that competition is there, then probably they would have also done the same thing as in India. Here, the, that is the main difference I see actually. Uh, First of all, the, the question which you asked, uh, I don't know where, how it applies uh, dep depending on the place because I hear, I feel that okay, the students look up to the teachers really in this school, what I have seen, probably that is my making the difference here in the school because here the t students look up to the teachers and they are very happy and they come back to the school and they are very happy to look, look, uh, see the teachers. So. I, I can't answer that question because I'm not facing that uh, kind of a problem actually here because here the students are very, very, uh, I mean, they respect the teachers, they love the teachers. Rather than respect, I would say, they love the teachers. So they come here, they uh, look at the teachers, they talk to them. So I can't answer that question because I don't find that kind of a difference here. Uh, probably because uh, really, like I said, I've just told you that okay, there is a, the love, the student, they love the teachers. Here we don't uh, look at the students as just uh, like somebody who comes here for uh, paying fees and taking education. We actually look at them as human beings and actually value them as individuals actually. So, uh, here you will see that okay, all the uh, teachers and children, they interact, uh, there is no difference uh, for them that okay, they are, uh, oh, this is a student, I will behave in that way or that way. No, they are friends probably, more of, more of more like a friend actually. So, the, the accessibility to the teachers is very, very easy for them and uh, we interact with them also in that way only. So, the... I would I would say that okay, people have gone, I am telling you one example, one of the students have gone to the uh, White House and presented a paper in, uh, on energy. Yeah, that uh, That's a rare uh, this thing to do for a school like ours, a very small school like ours. 
but that student will come back here and if she will be so happy to see the teachers and it, it will be still be a student for the teacher actually so i think that is basically the uh, the way we treat the students and the attitude that's why built up actually so we don't have uh, bullying or anything in the school because we treat them like uh, individuals actually and uh, love them actually so very very important i uh, i train the teachers just before you just came in i just was talking to them that okay uh, come first week of april we start training the teachers some teachers have joined new so i give them training and we got a professional training uh, company from outside uh, education uh, provider actually and we use them for training the teachers and it is it must be there otherwise teachers will never be able to cope up with the challenges which is coming up new new and uh, this so we have professional training uh, being given for the teachers and it's a must actually mm-hmm.